What's going on you guys? Welcome to another awesome video. In this video I'm just going to go through my, my thoughts on this beautiful machine. If you haven't checked out the unboxing of this machine and how to get started with it, please check out the previous video. But in this video I'm just going to talk about my favorite features about it, some things I don't like about it, and uh, yeah, let's go for it. So to start off I just printed out the bog standard frogs that had there and their blue PLA that they sent me. And I was amazed by the out of the box quality. This is the, the kind of machine that you want, you know, your general maker, your general, someone who doesn't know a lot about 3D printing, who just wants to get in and going. This is a fantastic start. Did a good old Benchy as well to just compare it to the other printers that I have and it's on par with the, the Ultimaker, maybe a little bit better in certain areas. The, the cooling on it is very, very good, especially on the top of the spout. I struggled that with that a lot of my Ultimaker, but that's also I need to upgrade the, the cooling fans on there. The ABS printed fantastically. I'm a bit skeptical about printing an ABS, but because it's a completely enclosed chamber um, with a heated bed, it prints magically. So I left that on for about 14 hours, had a quite a large surface area, and I just went for it. The shark just shows a lot of the large flat surfaces, and it prints beautifully. And then I thought, let me use this project like anybody else would, and that's for a project. And I decided to start the OpenRC F1 project. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. It's a model designed by Daniel Narey, and it's essentially a, an RC Formula One car that you can print and assemble and go racing. Very, very cool. And interestingly enough, Daniel Narey also designed the Benchy. So not only is the Benchy a good Benchy, his F1 car is an amazing Benchy. Um, it allows you to print very large flat surfaces, uh, allows you to do bridging. It allows you to experiment with um, overhangs as well. Um, everything that you want to push your printer's limit to, this model does it, and it's a project at the same time, which is very, very exciting. I didn't know this until I started it, and I loaded up the models, and I was like, hot damn, this is amazing. So I went ahead and printed that out. The, the gray's not in this. Or hide the wheels. I didn't really have any failures while printing out the entire Formula One car. The only failures I had was with the ABS, and that was just because I didn't put enough glue stick down there. So the materials that you can print with it, Dremel um, allow you to print all their proprietary materials of nylon, ABS, and PLA. I haven't tried any third-party uh, materials on this. Um, I don't want to. Um, I'm the kind of person if I'm told, you know, do it this way, you do it right the first time, it'll never break, hopefully. So I only use the materials, so I haven't tried any flexible, I haven't tried my user rigid ink that I use. Um, I just tried their bog standard filament which is actually fantastic. Um, I've used a lot of proprietary material for other machines and it's just horrendous cheap cheap material. Got a good material going for this. Um, as it's proprietary there is a little microchip on the spool so when you do insert it into there automatically reads what it is there and if you use their slicing software online you can just insert your model and print away you don't have to worry about any print settings. But if you use their version of Cura you then need to select the materials that you want and their version of Cura is very very simple to use um, it's exactly the same as the current Cura just built for this specific machine a nice little thing that this machine has is it has a little camera that you can monitor online unfortunately the only way you can access this camera is if you set it up in US mode um, which doesn't make much sense but it works that way um, I'm very scared leaving prints alone I like to watch my printer I've, I've seen a lot of horror stories of mounds of filament engulfing the hot end so I'm very scared of that but this allows me to actually watch my prints from you know while I'm at work or even while I'm sitting on the couch I don't need to get up and check it every every hour or so I can just pull it out on my phone and this actually wants me to this camera got me to get hold of a Raspberry Pi little camera and I'm going to start programming little monitoring systems in my own house so that I can watch my prints while at work. It's a very good little feature. 
The biggest problem with it, and this happened to me, is that if something fails, you can't stop it. Well, I can figure out a way to stop it. Maybe you can, but I couldn't stop it. So I had to sit for about three, four hours at work watching this fail repeatedly. And there was nothing I can do about it. So if there was a little feature that I can beep, stop it, that would be fantastic. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But like I said, I'm very happy with the the way this printer came out. That's so polite. I'll do my best to help. Just ask whatever you'd like me to do. That was f***ing Alexa doing his, her own thing. Alexa, stop. Here are the next three events. On Saturday, the 31st of March. Alexa, stop. She's doing spooky things. <laughs> so I'm very happy with this machine and the way that it works. I'm very pleased with the way that Dremel has treated this machine and how they presented it. They make fantastic rotary tools and this is just another tool that they've created and it really feels like something that I can go into a hardware store and then I can purchase and be happy with the product and that the service that they, they offer. I'm very, very happy with this machine. Being a product designer myself, it's designed very well. It's, it's a very good looking machine. It looks like a tool, it looks like this belongs in a garage, in a workshop, doing its thing. I'd just like to thank Dremel again for sending this machine out to me um, to review. No money was exchanged for this, if, you, if anyone's asking. Some candy would have been good, but nothing. So this is completely my own review, my own thoughts. And uh, unfortunately I have to send it back, which makes me very sad. Dremel currently retails for, I think, $1,700. I'll have to Google that one. Fact check. Ah, if I got it wrong, I'll just fix it on the screen. The magic of editing. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope I'd like to hear what you think of this machine. If you've tried this, if you've tried any of the Dremel machines, let me know in the comment section down below. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you, Dremel. I was, I'm a bit skeptical. I'm a bit skeptical, but 